Hello again, YouTube. All right, we're back with our 6502 computer project here. Um, when we left off last time, I was working on the uh, breadboard, which you can see I've added uh, some more wires to it. Um, it looks pretty crazy, um, but it's an essential uh, process to, to get rid of all the bugs um, before you have boards made. And, and speaking of which, um, I found a bug. You'll have to excuse all the wires running over here, but uh, if you look here on the schematic diagram, for some reason the library um, package in Eagle CAD software, um, CAD Soft Eagle, that's the software I use to uh, design the schematic and the circuit boards. And you download libraries if they don't have uh, what you're looking for part wise built in. I had downloaded this 6502 library. It did not have the BE um, line, the uh, the bus enable uh, pin 36. It, it just wasn't even part of the library. Consequently, uh, I missed that when I was wiring things up. And uh, when I first powered this computer on, nothing was happening. I could see using the oscilloscope that the clocks were running. Um, and the sync line was uh, fluctuating, so I knew that the processor was 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 going. But um, looking at the address lines, I didn't see any activity at all, and so I kind of knew something was wrong with the CPU. I reviewed the data sheet, and uh, when I stumbled on the uh, bus enable line, I, I kind of you know light bulb went off over my head. And, hey. Uh, I don't remember wiring that thing up. Of course, it was unwired, so it was floating. It has to be tied high, as you can see. I've handwritten it on my uh, schematic um, here. It has to be tied high in order to enable the bus so that the CPU will talk on its address lines and uh, and its uh, data line, so to speak. So, uh, real quick, here's my handwritten memory map. Um, 0 to 7 FFF, that's 32K of RAM. Uh, then from 8000 to FFFF, the top 32K of that, um, I've got a 32K ROM chip, but not all of that is um, currently enabled for, uh, for ROM access. I've got a bunch of uh, 4k blocks that I've reserved for uh, various interfaces and such um, and uh, just like uh, Steve Wozniak and and many others um, each uh, block will uh, allow me to interface an external device through uh, an expansion slot and that device will have its own ROM software um, so those uh, slots will not be accessible um, for ROM, but I do have a couple more blocks that I need to enable. I'm still working on how I'm going to uh, to do the addressing for those. But and I, I talked about that a bit last time. In the meantime, you can see at E000, I've got the integer basic uh, F000. I have Crusader. It's an assembler and disassembler and a uh, a uh, macro. Uh, assembler. You can use macros and type in uh, assembly language uh, and then uh, assemble it and run it, so to speak. And then the uh, WAS monitor is at uh, FF00. This is a pretty common configuration, by the way. Until I start getting fancy and modifying things, I'm pretty much running a standard Apple One uh, ROM image for right now. And uh, so uh, really quick, let me show you right now, even though I've got a, uh, a composite um, connector for a TV or a monitor, and there's a PS2 keyboard input. Right now I'm using the per, uh, propeller plug and a uh, Windows laptop running putty uh, as a serial terminal. Okay, uh, power's currently off on this machine let me turn it on here and uh, watch on the screen you'll see that there is my automatic reset such a simple little feature but I, I, I really do think it's neat let's verify that we can read uh, some of the RAM here I'm gonna try not to shake the camera 
too much here. Let's see. Very uh, bottom of memory. Let's just uh, let's just display a few pages here. All right. So we're, we've confirmed we have the ability to read to memory. Uh, let's go to. Uh, I don't want to mess with the zero page because the sixty five oh two sort of uses that as some extra registers. Um, let's uh, look at address location 3000. Notice it has 2C. I'm going to change that, proving that we can write to memory. Okay, a feature of this monitor is it'll show you what was there when you're replacing the contents of that address location. So if I display 3000 again, we see that I've changed the uh, contents uh, to zero, zero. Um, okay, uh, let's see what's in ROM at address. Uh, how about we'll go to uh, that uh, Crusader assembler. Um, this is a little portion of the code that comprises that assembler. Um, I think the guy's name is Ken Wesson that made this. Uh, let's uh, let's start it here. Okay, uh, I'm gonna select. I'll, I'll just enter in a super simple program. I'm gonna press N for new. Okay, and we'll load the accumulator with um, the letter J, and then I'm going to jump to the uh, memory location that will print out whatever is in the accumulator and then uh, we'll return to uh, the terminal oops uh, and uh, looks like I entered in a blank line there um, which won't hurt anything so I've listed the program. Somehow you can delete uh, a blank line. I can't remember how to do it. I know how to edit, but uh, regardless, let's let's assemble this. Okay, it's assembled now, and then it's at address location 300. We'll run it right from the assembler. And there's our letter J. Uh, if you want to see a disassembly, There's uh, my code and uh, and some stuff after it. I guess it does a a few uh, a, a few uh, uh, address areas at a time. So let's get out of this um, here and let's go to basic and. can see that basic is functioning as well. That's really it. Um, I'm going to keep this uh, video a little bit short for once, unlike my, my last video seemed to, to go on a little ways. And um, sometimes it's fun to do short and sweet. But uh, anyways, I wanted to give you a little bit of an idea of uh, early computer build, bug fix, and operation here, and, uh, and this is uh, what the process has been like. Um, I guess uh, and when I first brought this thing up, it, it seemed to have some pretty um, strange looking problems, and, and you know, the, the first power on is always a bit uh, curious, I guess I'll say, because uh, when it wasn't running, um, I had a lot of things to, to, you know, going through my mind of, uh, what it could be, you know, did I, did I mess up when I burned the ROM? Um, you know, did, did I wire something incorrectly? Uh, is it the, uh, 6821 peripheral interface adapter, which has to talk to the, uh, to the propeller chip? Is it the firmware and the propeller? Um, you know, did the, uh, processor get zapped when it was you know mailed somehow it got loaded with uh, 
static electricity and it's it's broken I, I don't know it's not easy to test these things um, unfortunately um, you know just a little bit of uh, reading in the data sheets and a little uh, trial and error and investigation uh, brought this thing up and it's it's currently functional so um, I'm modifying the schematic and we'll we'll keep testing and um, making sure that we've got everything uh, nailed down and then we'll have the boards made so uh, that's it for this one thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you next time thanks bye